Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda and Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers, and it's time once again for... Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. The weather's been great. Gizmo's been in a good mood. It's all good. <laughs> hey, everybody. If you stay tuned until the end today, you'll get to hear me answer a question. And I'll tell you a joke. Let's get started with a couple of shout outs. We have a card that we received this week from Kim, Adam, and Gidget. And we just got to show this card first. That's Kim, Adam, and Gidget. And look, this is a, on hard cardstock paper. It is just pictures of us. It's got our theme picture. What a nice card. What really a, neat. With all the pictures of all of us. And then there, and then Kim, Adam, and Gidget. What a great card. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Very thoughtful. And by the way, I've had a couple of irate mails, emails, about me saying the word guys. Like, mm -hmm. hi, guys. <laughs> I just want to make it official. I looked that up. I don't mean it as, <laughs> no. hi, boys. Hi, all you men out there. Uh -uh. I look it for, hey, everybody. Yeah. I do it, too. We now, both do it. I looked it up. Anytime you're addressing a mixed audience, which I know we are, <laughs> you can say, guys, it's perfectly okay. <laughs> means I so, love you. Yeah, I wasn't trying to upset anybody. <laughs> you might notice that sometimes I'll put a little riddle, just about every time, some sort of little game within our show. And the first one, or maybe the second week, Leanne, she figured it out. Mm -hmm. I put three pictures in there. I put Ron Popeil, remember that? <laughs> Set it and forget, forget it. it. <laughs> I also put in Bing Crosby. Mm -hmm. And I put Frankie Valley. A lot of people said, hey, there's Bing Crosby and Frankie Valley. Or, hey, it's Ron Popeil. But the fact was, it was their birthdays. They were all on the same birthday. Mm -hmm. Leanne was the only person to get that. Good job, Leanne. <laughs> Our first question is from Pat. And it, it's really not a question. I got this from Nextdoor. Nextdoor is the publication that you must have an address, a physical address in this area, and it will help you in many ways. It can talk about the weather, about hurricanes coming, about burglars. Where to find a high chair, where, whether to find a stroller, a car seat, uh, it's, and where's your best doctors or dentists. It's a great app. You might remember that a couple of weeks ago, I made light, me making light? Uh-oh. <laughs> of snakes in the house or uh, lizards and uh, etc. But this was really on next door and I've looked it up it's a thing. It's a thing. It's uh, real. It's true. <laughs> Pat says frogs keep appearing in her toilet. Oh my gosh. They're pretty big. Oh. After the first sighting and removal, I make sure this toilet is flushed every day. Help. That seems hard to believe. I would not want to go in that bathroom ever again or even use that bathroom. <laughs> I did my research and I found out what I think is the reason toilets have a drain the drains usually have some kind of vent and that vent may go up through the ceiling of the house and up through the roof. Oh. And these tree frogs, they can get on your roof. Mm. They can go up your downspout. They can, I mean, they yeah. can climb. They've got little, the walls, sure. little suction cups. And if your vent doesn't have screen over it, they can actually come down that vent. Oh. And that's probably what's happening. So anyway, I thought that was kind of ridiculous, but since then I've heard some stories and <laughs> Pat put some screen over that vent. Vent pipe. Yeah. <laughs> this is from John. With well over 100,000 residents, has the village's lost, lost its charm and sense of community? I keep <laughs> telling people, you can't say the villages and expect anything to be true. You can't expect anything to be true when you talk about an entire town. Mm -mm. There are 140,000 people here. Right. You can't label them all together. They're not all this and they're not all that. So has it lost its charm? It has neighborhoods. There are how many? 
Well, I don't know how many neighborhoods. There's a boatload of neighborhoods. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking oh, 80 well, or more, 80, right? 80 or more, probably near 100 now. I mean, let, let, me, let me name a few. Yeah. We live in Dunedin. You've got Hillsboro. You've got Sanibel. You've got... Gilcrest. Uh, Gilcrest. Fernandina. You've got Pinellas. Fernandina. You've got Marsh Bend. You've got Chitty Chatty. These are all small neighborhoods. Yes. How small? Let's talk about our own. Well, our own neighborhood has uh, 2,400 uh, residents and 1,200 homes. So ours is a quite large village. There are smaller villages. I think DeSoto has like 600 homes or residents. No, is it 600? No, 613 homes, but 1,200 residents. So each village may vary. Um, so, but we're a community within a community. Absolutely. That's yeah. a good, good way mm -hmm. to put it. We have our own get togethers. Yes. We're having one, what, uh, Tuesday night? Uh-huh. We are. And, uh, they're going to block off a little bit of the street and we're all going to go down there and Dave, the hot dog man's going to be there and there's going to be a band playing. And, and they're going to have Mystic uh, Ice Cream's going to be there. So, yeah. And it will only be people from this section. So, yes. Uh, not even the 2,000. This is a section within a section. Right. We're we're the eastern part. So maybe yeah. a thousand people are invited. There'll probably be a couple of hundred show up. Right. It's nice. It's and that, uh, it's that that's nice. your sense of community and your charm it, is mm -hmm. when you break it down into smaller groups. As far as has the villages lost charm? What you talking about? Here's a question we've touched on time and time yeah. again, and we never really know the answer. A lot of times these answers are just as easy for you to find out by calling the, the sales office mm -hmm. at the villages and asking. And it, it is hard to get a direct answer. I'm going to tell you right now. But Jill writes, how soon is too soon to be doing a lifestyle visit? My husband and I are still a few years from retirement. I'm already looking into the next chapter. Is it crazy to come and see what the villages is all about if we're not within at least a year of retiring? It's not crazy at all. No. You don't want to wait till that last year. And they understand that. And you know, you don't have to be 55 to take a lifestyle. We've seen people that are mm -hmm. 50 take it. Mm -hmm. There are probably people in their 40s taking it. Just call the sales office, tell them your story, and they'll let you know if you're too old or just right. I got a feeling you're just That's right. right. This question actually really bummed her out the first couple of months we were here. Uh huh. I know what you're going to say. Stephen Kathy, right? Are there dress requirements when playing golf? Crazy question, I know, but it always looks nicer when golfers wear golf attire. Just curious about that one. The answer is yes. yes. Here, all you're really asked to do, well, there are two things, I guess. Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. wear a collared shirt, not a t-shirt. Even if it is a one of these, you're not supposed to wear it. Yeah. And you're not supposed to wear things with advertising or logos. So that comes to my story, right? That's right. Uh, we were here the first month, well, probably less than second that. Second month. Second, second month. month, and we went golfing, and I hadn't started golfing yet, so I was a spectator. So I went up and got a spectator band, and they put it on your cart, which is fine. And when I got up there, he the what they call them, the bastards, ambassador. no, ambassador said, <laughs> excuse me, um, you cannot wear that. Uh, that's not a proper attire. So they pointed to the to the um, sign on the window saying it had to be a collar and whatever. And I had a t-shirt on that had Air Force on it, which just the words Air Force. And it was a glittery t-shirt. It was a girl's t-shirt. It was a girly t-shirt, but it, it was, you know, a t-shirt, no collar. I and mean, it had words on it. So that was a no-no. You cannot do that. You ha he said, you can't go. And I said, really? So I went out anyway, they let me go. And I felt so horrible the whole time. I was just, I felt like I got smacked she on actually, the hands. She <laughs> actually, she was actually teary-eyed. I was. Um, I said, how unfriendly was that? <laughs> spectators are, are free and are able to come on the course. Mm -hmm. You just have to tell them who you're following and they'll give you a band. And, and mm -hmm. it was, it all, it's all good. He let her go out. Right. But not until he had crushed her. Crushed my spirits. Yeah. <laughs> but I have solved that whole problem about the collared shirts. And I am, I'm, I'm kind of thrilled with myself over this uh, because I made this oh, no. uh, just in case I ever forget to wear a collared shirt. And I keep this in my golf bag. And look, it's, it's like a dickie. I just put this over my, my thing. You just tuck her in a little bit. I got some collars. Now I can play golf. So thank you, Goodwill. What do you think about that? 
There you go. Actually, if any of you guys out on HGTV or whatever want to keep it, keep it on. Use this idea. Keep it. Just you know, just remember where you got. <laughs> Penny is concerned about insects. She writes, "Do the villages spray each community for insects, especially around the areas that have water?" We don't know about the water, but we do know that a truck comes by here regularly. It's late at night because that truck is noisy. It sounds like uh, Tom Cruise, you know, in his Top Gun airplane coming down the street. And it comes down and sprays one side of the street, and usually it turns around and goes up and sprays the other side. And uh, we don't know what they're spraying. We know they tell us it's not uh, not harmful to humans. But I do know that when she takes Gizmo out for a walk, when she brings him back, she always washes off his feet. I do wash his feet off every time we come in. <laughs> we don't have big bug problems here. In Indiana, we would find a roach every once in a while. Sorry, but we did. <laughs> And uh, a silverfish, maybe. Oh. Uh, centipedes. We had we had lots of centipedes. Yeah. She would freak I out. I hate those dudes. And they are they are <laughs> creepy. Uh, but here, no centipedes, no, no silverfish, no roaches. No. You know, palmetto bugs are. Uh, they're a roach. They're right? giant roach. Yeah. And we we've seen two of those. That was like the first month we were here, yeah. so they were hiding. We got hiding. those cleared out. So Penny, I wouldn't worry about the insects so much. Yeah. Geneva wants to know if we played golf before we moved to the villages. Me, never. No, no. <laughs> My history with golf, never played it as a kid, never played it through college. Got out of college, got some buddies that played golf, and I started playing. Played a lot. Played a lot back in the day. And then I had back surgery, and my golf was done. And I would eventually play maybe once a year in a scramble or something like that. But coming down here the first month, I didn't play at all. Then I thought, you know what? Free golf, let's take advantage of yeah. it. Started playing. The first year I played over 250 times. He did. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many times I've played this year. I've cut back on it a little bit because I'm doing other things too. They keep track of how many times we play golf. So that's awesome. You can just look it up on their website and I'll be surprised how many times I play. She's playing at least twice a week. So she's yeah. going to have over 100 rounds in this year. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, we play more now than we've ever played, mm -hmm. of course. The second part to Geneva's question is, how have you and Linda's hobbies changed since you moved to the villages? Well, mine has changed because I'm more active. I, it's easier to get to a rec center, to do the aerobics, the, um, all the different um, activities, um, walk off pounds, yoga. So th that's been a big change for me, which has been great. Uh, other hobbies, um, I don't have a lot of other hobbies. Oh, well, you play cards. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's the biggie because I do. I'm playing today. I played last night. I played the day before. But I love <laughs> my card games. That's a big thing here in the villages is getting together with other people. It takes people. four hours to play these card games. Yeah. If you play four hands, it's an hour hand. And so we play, so I have played three times this week, but uh, yeah, that's a lot of sitting. So that's why I do a lot of water aerobics and get up and do something and do go walking and get out in the outside and exercise. But yeah. That's why I keep so much spam on hand here, you know. <laughs> well, oh, good. So you can cook? <laughs> no. And my hobbies, I mean, I, I, I fished, I woodwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, I don't do much woodwork. I'm a member of the woodworking club, but it's not convenient. It's uh, it's probably eight miles away. Yeah. Probably a fifteen minute drive. Um, but I I still fish a little bit. I still play golf. I still hang out with my buddies. Um, yeah. I'm a photographer too. I like to go out and if I see a subject, you know, a, yeah. a, a fancy bird or an animal, I, I love to grab the camera and. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're and we're bicycling, so we didn't bicycling. do that before because we lived in a hilly section yeah. before, and it was that was difficult to do. We we didn't ride. Mm -mm. at all back in Indiana mm -mm. could because we were on dangerous roads. I thought it was dangerous anyway. Oh yeah. And plus there was hills. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you got to ride up those hills and uh, <laughs> we didn't even we didn't even know what an e-bike was back then. <laughs> PJ, we'll take your question because I think it's important and it's a question again that we've answered time and time again, but PJ wonders if there are other retirees like 
I don't know if it's herself or his self, well, PJ. You don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, they want to know if there are other retirees that live alone that move to the villages. Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. Yes. And we will feature some of those on a, on a show real soon. Uh, don't be afraid. You won't be alone when you're here. But, I mean, I guess we will be alone. You'll <laughs> no. be living alone. But <laughs> there'll be other people, people living alone. <laughs> you can be alone together. That's it. We did an experiment. Frank wanted to know, his, well, his concern was the houses are so close together. People, they are close together. If my window was open, I could actually yeah. spit on my neighbor's house. I think I could. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I we could. can hear, there is a hot tub uh, two doors down and we can hear them talking and then when they have their music on, we can I, hear We can't hear them talking. We, can, we can't hear what anything mumble, what mumble. they're saying, but yeah. yeah, we know they're having a good time and we're, we're not because we don't have a hot tub. <laughs> but you know, that's kind of a, uh, upsetting, but. Yeah. But he's concerned. Um, Frank says his hearing's not what it used to be. And while he doesn't blast his TV or radio, he'd worried that he might be disturbing someone else. Mm. I'm going to tell you, we have not encountered that at all. Mm -mm. That that uh, we're not disturbed, and mm. and uh, I'm sure that we don't disturb others. But we did an experiment today, and uh, let's cut to that footage. We're in the living room, and we're going to test the soundproofness of our room and see if we can hear outside the sounds. Now this wall consists of drywall, then uh, studs, and then we have a concrete block. So we'll see what we can hear. Here's the sound we'll be testing. Linda's making her way to the other side of the wall. She's over there now and uh, we'll see if we can hear. Well, there it is. You can definitely hear it, but it's not as loud and obnoxious as it was here in the house. Well, there you have it. That's about as scientific a demonstration as you could have, wasn't it? <laughs> we could hear it, but I mean, the concrete block, I think, really knocks down the sound, but there are windows. Those windows are glass, and some sound's going to come through that. But if you're in the house next door, I don't think you're going to hear anything. But one thing we like to do... Yeah, we use this little speaker, which you can set up with your Bluetooth and it puts right between the chair and the couch where we're sitting or whatever and it's just very convenient and it actually feels like we're at the drive-in so we kind of like this you know I when she's cooking she can take this with yeah. her into the kitchen and you don't have to turn the tv up to right. maximum volume and just set that by wherever she is and all right there you go <laughs> aurora what a she's, beautiful name yeah she's one of our longtime <laughs> viewers and uh, we always comment about we like that name I love our name she said, we mentioned that the temps are already in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this question is from a couple of weeks ago because we just, we have too many to get to each week. Yeah. And she's wondering to see if it's common that people adjust their day's outdoor schedule, like walking, bicycling, joggling, jogging. I'm going to start over. <laughs> Juggling. <laughs> Aurora says, you both mentioned that the temps are in the 80s already. This is from about three weeks ago. Right. Sorry, Aurora, we've been swamped. So anyway, <laughs> here you go. She's wondering if it's common to see the people adjust their outdoor schedules, mm -hmm. like walking, biking, jogging, to early morning hours, say 5 or 6 a.m., once the temperatures soar to minimize the heat and humidity exposure. I couldn't really comment on that, Aurora, because I'm, I've never been outside at 5 or 6 a.m. <laughs> He's a late sleeper. I get up early with Gizmo and we take a walk at seven o'clock and it's lovely in the morning. And that's when I like to make our, in the summertime, make our tea times earlier uh, before not, about nine o'clock. So if you wait till 11 or 12 or one, you're gonna be warm. And uh, so, yeah, we do adjust our activities around the heat. Yeah, and, and I mean, we can't overestimate how hot it gets in the summer. It's mm -hmm. really hot. Mm -hmm. 
And there are some times a day when it would almost take your breath away. Yep. So you wouldn't want to be out jogging and cycling during nope. that time. I do want to say that it's doable. I mean... Yeah, it's doable because we, we're going to take water with us. We're going to have to, I take a towel, a wet towel, and put it in the cooler in the cart. And so when we're golfing, if we happen to get a tea time late in the afternoon, that towel will go with me. It helps, helps a lot. And you've heard us mention the golf carts. Anytime you're rolling, you can be cool mm -hmm. in the golf cart. Mm -hmm. Now, that sun might be baking in from the side, and, man, it will roast mm -hmm. your left leg if you're mm -hmm. driving that cart or your yeah. right leg if you're the passenger. So wear your sunscreen. Flop that window down, get that breeze in your face. It feels so good. And sometimes the golf carts will have portable little fans. And uh, I've got one that's hooked into my co golf cart through the battery. So that's called Easy Breeze. So that's pretty nice too. So there are ways to combat the heat. Dave and Evelyn right? they just returned home from a week in the villages. I bet they wish they were back in the villages. I, I bet they do. <laughs> they said on several golf carts, they noticed this unusually shaped white container. <laughs> you can see it there in the picture. Do you have a clue why some carts have this feature and others don't? <laughs> well, Dave and Evelyn, as you know, this is a retirement community. We're all older and we all, uh, you know, our bladders are not what they used to be. So uh, the carts, if, if that's a problem that you have, each card has one of these. And uh, here's... And lucky if you're a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, Dave, Evelyn, I'm kidding you. Those are not uh, urinals. <laughs> no. Those are sand bottles. Those are full of sand and grass seed. probably grass seed mixture. Mm -hmm. If you golf properly, which we don't, <laughs> You take a lovely little divot each time you swing. The club cuts the ground and it will expose the dirt. And that takes a long time to heal on a golf course. And if you're playing right, every golfer's doing that. So they provide a big box full of the seed yeah. sand combo. Put that in your... Urinal. <laughs> what do you call it? Sand holder. Your I... sand bottle. Put it in your sand bottle. <laughs> and then after each shot, you fill the yeah. hole up with that, mm -hmm. and uh, the course heals faster, and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. And they do have restrooms sprinkled around the course, so you can stop and uh, <laughs> and not use a yard. Yeah. <laughs> Brian writes, "What Florida house maintenance task has become tiresome compared to the good old Midwest? Mm -hmm. For example, fighting mold, cleaning the bird cage, the exterior walls, etc." Mm. What do you think? There are a lot of different chores we have here than we did back in Indiana. Because now we have to take a little duster and get the bugs off the outside of your house and around your windows. That's new, but that doesn't take Why long. Why is that new? Uh, we had to do that We didn't then. have a lot of bugs that stuck to our no, house. No, but I mean, you'd have cobwebs and stuff yeah. like that. But I wouldn't really think that'd be a new one. <laughs> I know that she is very happy because she cut four toilets down oh, that's true. To two, so yes. there are only two toilets. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, and you just... And, and don't give me any hate mail. It's not like I don't ever clean the toilets. She likes to do it. When do you clean? Oh, yeah. I like to do it. <laughs> what woman out there likes to clean the toilet? Who likes but to clean But yeah, I guess he was talking mostly exterior. Yeah. We do have our house power washed here. We didn't mm -hmm. do that back in Indiana, but right. we hire somebody to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you don't really want to power wash it, you know, with those high, super-duper pressure. Yeah. They know how to do it here without damaging your stucco and your paint job on mm -hmm. the exterior. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have pavers and flower beds with pavers and such, and they need to be power washed too. So that's one. Well, and think about another one. You just said flower beds, the, uh, the weeds. That's a little different here. We have to pick a lot more weeds. Let's go outside and see Linda in action. Here's the chore that we don't like so much, picking weeds. We do have a barrier here in the yard under the rocks, but they will come up occasionally. So we do have to pick them up and you, sorry you're going to hear the lawnmower, but that happens here all over. <laughs> we put down pre-emergent in the spring, but obviously we didn't get it down soon enough, but we've got some weeds coming through. The part I don't like is you have to push these rocks out of the way. That's not so much, but you know, these weeds come up pretty easy. Back home in Indiana, the, gr the ground was clay and it was really hard to get the weeds up here. 
you barely touch them and you just pick them right up. That's pretty nice. Now we don't know if it's going to be a regular feature or not, but we're getting more and more questions for Gizmo <laughs> and uh, we may have him on once in a while, but today he decided to take a few questions himself. I'll read it to you. This is from Scott and Jean Duncan. They're also longtime viewers. Thanks guys. We recently moved into the beautiful village of St. Catherine and we are in need of a veterinarian for our three year old Scottish Terrier named Piper. Any recommendations or suggestions? We always look forward to Mailbag Monday and all your shows. All right, buddy, take it away. Scott wants a recommendation for a vet. Well, that's a tough one, Scott. Mommy and Daddy don't have a lot of faith in the local vets. You see, you take your dog to the vet, and then I can't tell him what's wrong. I mean, I, I got a little upset stomach. How do I let him know? So then they perform this test and that test, and then they want to grind down my claws and look in my ears, and then they do something funny to my anal gland. I don't know. And next thing you know, Mommy and Daddy are upset because they just spent $300, and the vet told them that I probably ate some grass. All right. Well, we appreciate that, pal. Well said. Yeah. Here's a joke for you. Why are dogs like telephones? Because they both have caller IDs. <laughs> That's going to do it for... Mailbag Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We sure enjoyed bringing it to you. Please press that like and subscribe button. Until next time. See you when you get here.